because I was singing Christmas songs last time I taught this lesson, I've just gone live and instantly got a Christmas song in my head again. Which is fine, if you're watching this on catch up in like February, it is, it is, uh, well, it's late November, which is Christmas time as far as I'm concerned. because I don't really want to film near the sink but it actually makes a lot more sense for you to just do this by the sink like we're going to rub paint all over our hands and then try and get it off so just be next to a sink yeah if you can be don't do what I often do and nearly drop your screen in the sink if you're watching this on a phone I'm ready, you know. This is weird. I'm not faffing around. If this was Facebook, I'd be uh, chatting. But there's no comments. You're just going to have to amuse yourselves by, I don't know, liking this video and subscribing to my YouTube channel. I don't really know what difference it makes. Like, I'm not getting money from adverts, so I don't know why. It's just everyone says that, don't they? Like and subscribe. So I sort of feel like I should say it too. I don't care if you subscribe. Well, I do, I do. Um, yeah, I'm just, I'm just mooching about. It just feels like a little bit early to just jump right in. Because some people do like to come and watch live on YouTube, don't they? Like you lot that are here now. I'll pour some more coffee. That's always a winning strategy. Should we just get going? Should we just start? We'd better, we'd better, nah. I, I'm gonna, <coughs> excuse me. I'm gonna go, for, gonna go for the loo and then we'll start. So we've got about one minute.
All right, let's do this. Ah, see, more people are here. That's why I faff. Faffing is always rewarded with more people. Okay, flipping around, let's go. Flipping the whole thing around, actually, and start with. Hello, Science Alliance. Hello. Ah, I love this lesson. This is all ages home ed. We're doing infection and response. We've got a few lessons left. So we've done pathogens, pathogens being teeny tiny little microorganisms, micro teeny tiny organisms, living things, viruses, bacteria, fungi, they're all around us. Uh, but we're looking at the ones that cause infection. So <coughs> it's so appropriate. Um, I want to ask you a question, because I've learned a lot of things this week for this lesson, um, which I, I didn't know, like I'd heard of and I thought they were true, maybe they weren't true, so the first thing I want to get you thinking about, because I didn't know whether this was true or not, is this question here. And I'm going to get you to rub paint on your hands in a minute while you're thinking about it. Is being around disease-causing germs, pathogens, if you've been to previous lessons, is being around disease-causing germs good for you because it makes your body stronger? Is being around disease-causing germs good for you because it makes your body stronger? I've put, builds your immune system, okay? There's a lot of talk about the immune system. It's just how our body reacts to disease. Is it good for your immune system to be surrounded by, by germs? What do you reckon? Have a think about it. Um, and in the meantime, if you're doing that sensitivity, some of you won't want to get sticky. This is pretty weird. Um, but I said it on the internet, I saw it on the internet, so it must be okay. Put like a blob, I don't know, like a two p sized blob of paint on your hands and rub it in. Uh, I realised on Facebook while I was doing this lesson the other day that this makes me look like She-Hulk. So I'm absolutely delighting in this activity. Obviously the idea is that there's germs all around us, but we can't see them. So we can't see when we've washed them off our hands. So She-Hulky, so cool. I was just so tempted to do my face as well. Um, so we, we, the idea is we'll put some paint on our hands, really give it a good rub in, okay? Because the, be, the germs will be in there, they're everywhere. Um, and then we'll let it dry. I can't hold my phone now. Um, while we, we think about the answers to some questions. And then we'll wash our hands and we'll see how good we are at hand washing. So, is being around pathogens, disease-causing germs, is it good for you? Because it builds up a strong immune system. Well... There was a lot of debate on Facebook about this yesterday when I did this lesson. And if you said yes, you were right. And if you said no, you're also right. Uh, it depends on how old you are, it turns out. So this, there is quite a lot of evidence to show that children, very young children growing up, if they're in, a, in an overly clean environment, they tend to have more allergies when they get older. Um, this is just an average, okay? So like there's a, a study showed that children who went to nurseries tended to have fewer allergies when they got older because they've obviously been surrounded by a lot of different germs. Um, I grew up with my brother in, uh, I don't think my mum's watching this, not a clean farmhouse, right? Uh, we both grew up in the same environment, surrounded by cat hair and filth, and my brother has terrible allergies and I don't have any. So you're probably thinking, like, well, this doesn't apply to me. It's just a kind of general average rule, all right? Um, it, it's the dark side of science, but they did a test on mice. They got some baby mice and brought them up in just a pretty much germ-free environment and some mice in a, a normal germ environment. And sure enough, the ones that were germ-free when they were very small, they tended to develop a sort of swelling of the kind of throat area in sort of the same way that humans would get asthma. You can't really compare animal studies to human studies directly, but, but it's, it suggests anyway that that is true. But if you're an adult, your immune system is already set up. So adults who were sort of having to stay inside for ages during lockdown, some of them were worried that when they got out, um, their immune system would be weak and they'd catch loads of germs. Not true. You would probably feel like you were getting ill because you would, weren't used to being ill because you'd been isolating, but your immune system would respond to those germs in just the same way as it had, like four years previously. Okay, I'm just waving my she-hulk arms. Right, uh, before we went to <laughs> getting green paint all over my computer, Four more questions for you to think about. Four things I discovered on this research journey this week. <laughs> so good. I'll just uh, flip the screen. Sorry, iPhone. Here we are. Um, I've put, can you write what you think? If you went to my Facebook group and you got the sheet, then you've got this on a handy sheet. 
Um, sorry. Why is soap better than just water? It is. Soap is better for washing your hands with than just water. But why? The results might surprise you. Um, is it better to use antimicrobial soap? I couldn't really explain what that was. So I just found an, an advert for Dettol antibacterial original soap. It's the gentle, hygienic, blah, blah, blah. Uh, the unique antibacterial agents from Dettol help to rid your skin of the germs and bacteria that can't be removed by water alone. That's, that's basically what it is. It's got stuff in it that kills germs. Is that better for you than normal soap? Um, is it better to use a paper towel to turn off the tap? If you're in a public toilet and you've washed your hands, you want to turn off the tap, do you get a paper towel to do it? Do you just use your hands? And if you're in a public toilet, what are the problems with filling the sink to wash your hands instead of using running water? So I'm, I'm hoping most of you, if you need to wash your hands in a public toilet, you don't fill the sink up with water and then wash your hands and then pull the plug out, right? You just use the running water. But why? The two main reasons why it's a good idea to not do that. Still, still hand waving my She-Hulk hands. I'll give you 20 seconds because I think it'll be interesting if you actually write down answers and, you know, maybe, maybe some whys as well, give some reasons. Hi, and on 10 more seconds. These are teacher seconds, as you know, so they bear absolutely no relevance to sort of real life. No resemblance to real life. Five, four, three, uh, two, one. Right, let's go. Let's wash our hands. Let's unshe hulk ourselves. Uh, what I want you to do is, it's quite tricky this because obviously we're thinking about it, but if you've got a sink in front of you, or a bowl of water, try and wash your hands in like the normal way that you would wash your hands if you weren't trying to get them really clean, okay? So you've just been to the loo, maybe there's a bowl of warm soapy water in the sink because someone's just done the washing up. How are you gonna wash your hands? Just try and be, try and be really honest. So I'm doing it now, don't look, don't look at your hands because I'll give you clues. Okay, if I'm being perfectly honest, before COVID certainly, I, I can already see in the camera that I've failed. Um, I don't think I'd do any more than that. And then give them a good dry on an old towel. Not looking. Right, so as it's happened every time, because I have been honest, I've got loads of paint still on my wrists. Have you got that as well? When you're hand washing, try and get all the way up to your wrists as well. Um, because people tend to miss that bit. And I've, I've definitely got a kind of green hue in the palm of my hand. If you look at your nails, Look at your like creases all around your nails. You'll probably see a lot of green. That is true to form. That is where the germs will be um, in, all, in all the crevices. <coughs> so let's have another go when you've finished inspecting your hands. Have another good go and see just how long it takes to get all those germs off, uh, all the paint off. Now, so soap is better than just water. Well, we looked at last week, didn't we? How a lot of viruses and bacteria are coated with this sort of fatty layer. And we know that like, washing up liquid and soap breaks down fat because that's what we use it for. Um, but it doesn't kill all of them. Like not, we, we learned, didn't we, last week, definitely not all germs get killed because they, they don't all have this fatty layer. Um, but what is happening, why soap is better, is we imagine you've got, <coughs> excuse me, very appropriate, that I'm infected at the moment. Um, imagine you've got a plate with some, like, I don't know, dried marmite stuck to it. What the washing up liquid does is it lifts the marmite off the plate, doesn't it? It just kind of gets underneath and lifts it off. That's what the soap is doing with your germs on your hands as well. It's not necessarily killing them, but it's just kind of getting underneath and lifting them all away. Um, and the other reason that washing with soap is better, which I was surprised by, is kind of psychology. It's because it's friction that is getting rid of a lot of these germs in the same way that you need to scrub that marmite off. You just need to push the germs off your hands. And if people are using soap, they scrub more, like they, they take more time doing it and they take more care to scrub. I don't know, because you've got the soap in front of you, I suppose, you want to make bubbles. Whereas if people are just using water, they don't tend to scrub as much because you can't really see a result, can you? Uh, so that's another reason. 
why it's better. Uh, I haven't done this in the other lessons, but I did read that this is one of the reasons why um, like antibacterial gels, you know, um, are not as good as hand washing at all. You've got to soak the germs for 10 seconds in the antibacterial gel. I'm just, yeah, what's the word I'm looking for? Hand gel, isn't it? Um, which obviously, you know, people don't tend to do. Hand washing much, much better than using a gel. Right, I'm just gonna put this away so that I don't end up sloshing it all over my computer. Um, is it better to use antimicrobial soap? Well, you might have guessed from what I just told you. No, it's not because soap kills a lot of germs anyway. And if it doesn't do that, then it lifts it off. Um, I think, I don't know how Dettol are managing this because I'm sure I read that the government have actually said that you're not allowed to market antimicrobial soap anymore. Like they're not trying, can't try and make people buy it because science has proven that it's just utterly useless. It's interesting, isn't it? If you know that and then you read this advert, uh, the unique antibacterial agents from Dettol Rid your skin of the germs and bacteria that can't be removed by water alone. Like all soap, all the cheapest, cheapest, weepest soap will do that. So don't be buying that. Um, is it better to use your hand or to use a paper towel to turn off the tap? The science suggests that it doesn't matter, that there's, there's no difference. You would think, wouldn't you, that you wouldn't want to touch the tap because like, other people have touched it. Apparently, there's no evidence to suggest that it's more hygienic to use paper towels. Psychologically, you might want to, but obviously a bit of a waste of paper towels as well. Thought that was interesting. And the problems with why you wouldn't just fill a sink with warm soapy water and then wash your hands in it. Uh, there's two main problems with that. First of all, as we've just learned, the soap isn't gonna automatically kill all the germs and germs love to be wet and they love to be warm. So it might be that germs that were in the sink already are now just having a lovely time and more likely to get onto your hands. Um, and also, like when you've just washed up your plate with the marmite on you rinse it don't you you wouldn't just like let the washing up liquid rinse the lift the marmite off and then stick it on the rack you've got to rinse it to get rid of the dirt and that's what you're doing when you rinse your hands all those germs that have been lifted off uh, they're not dead they could still be active or alive but they're going down the black hole so there you go right i'm gonna <laughs> I've just got green paint all over the keys of my computer. Uh, I'm going to show you a picture now. And what I'd like you to do is there are five main ways that germs spread. It's actually called transmission. Oh, I can write forwards because I'm on YouTube. This will be easier. How germs spread or how they're tran transmit, transmit, the transmission of germs, the spreading of germs happens in sort of five main ways. And they're all in this picture. So have a look. <laughs> Here we go. How might you get ill, please, if you came into this kitchen for a snack? Be as precise as you can. So I'll just give you a little tour. We've got a person here. They're sweating. They're saying, achoo, okay? They're full of germs. Um, there's some dirt on the kitchen cupboards. There's a dirty newspaper there. There's a kettle there with some, some green water in it. There's some breadsticks. There's a fly flying above them. There's some mouldy peppers, uh, banana skin. There's a waffle maker with a rat on it. I don't know how the rat got there. I don't know how it's going to get off. But anyway, some old takeaway containers. There's an ice cream next to some eggshells. Uh, and there's a, a fresh apple there also next to an eggshell and a rat on top of an old can. So can you can you tell me? Come on, you should be able to get at least five. <coughs> I haven't been getting very good answers to this on Facebook. And I'm realising that maybe it's because I phrased the question wrong. I've put how might you get ill? I probably should have said... How might you pick up a germ? How might a germ get into your body if you came into this kitchen for a snack? Because pe people were saying things like, oh, the rat will have germs on. I'm like, yeah, but why will that make you ill? Is, are you gonna stroke the rat? Is the rat gonna bite you? I don't know. Be precise, please. And I'll write some answers on the board while you're doing that. I suppose how the germs spread, I could, yeah, how the germs spread would have been, I suppose, a better way, but I can hear that you're getting the right answers. <laughs> you're doing better than that Facebook lot, trust me. Uh, okay. 
this conversation, we're, we're not have the comments running on Facebook. This bit just descended into people talking about how they actually would get a snack. Like someone was going, well, it could eat the bread. I'm like, this isn't about how you get a snack. This is about how you get ill. Um, I'm thinking that probably a lot of you have noticed the sneeze. Yes. So sneeze, spreading little droplets, particles of virus, because a, a cold is a virus. Um, I'm going to give you 10 more seconds, then I'm just going to going to go through the answers with you. Five main ways that diseases spread. Seven, six, five, four. Here we go. I will show you behind me. I've written them down. Uh, so the first one is obvious, pretty obvious, isn't it? It's just contact. So like, I don't know, some of the mouldy food, obviously, various funguses are pathogens. So if you touch the mould, apparently we touch our faces on average, like every two to three minutes. And people aren't washing their hands every two to three minutes. So if you've touched something that is going to make you ill, the chances are at some point it's going to end up in your eye when you rub your eye or your nose or your mouth. It's going to make you poorly. Uh, yes, some diseases, some pathogens only like live in water and spread through water. We'll talk about that in a sec. Through the air. So most of you are getting the sneeze that it's uh, Cold is a virus, so a sneeze will spread virus over, like for up to 10 metres, I think it is. And then obviously if someone quickly touches it while the virus is still active, then that would make you poorly. Uh, poor food preparation. Quite a few of you will have noticed the raw eggs and been talking about salmonella, which again we will mention soon. Um, but yes, eggs can quite frequently contain a bacteria called salmonella. It's why you can't eat raw eggs. You cook eggs so that if there is any salmonella bacteria in there, <clears throat> the salmonella dies. But here we have something called cross-contamination. So we've got a lovely apple that someone might want to eat and the egg is touching it. And obviously you're not going to heat up the apple before you touch it. So salmonella bacteria could infect someone by the apple. That's why in kitchens they have different coloured chopping boards. Yeah, so you don't use the same chopping board for meat as you use for vegetables, this sort of thing. Um, and vectors, I've written. If you're coming to my IGCSE physics lessons, you might be like, oh, vectors, yes, lower, like velocity is a speed with a dimension. No, not that kind of vector. If you like art, you might be like, ah, oh, yes, a graphic. No, not that kind of vector either. There's another kind of vector. I'll give you a clue. In this part of the picture, there are two vectors. Here we go. Just uh, this bit here. There's two vectors in this part of the image. You can just see the breadsticks, the mouldy peppers, the fly buzzing around a takeaway container and some rats on a waffle maker. There's two vectors in that part of the image. Five, four, there's two mouldy peppers, but a mouldy pepper is not a vector. Three, two, one, did you get it? The vectors are the rat and the fly. Vectors, we've got to be careful here. Vectors are organisms, living things that carry disease, that spread disease. So um, the pathogen kind of is the disease. The pathogen, like the bacteria or the virus, that actually causes the disease. But the rat or the fly is uh, the vector because it, it spreads the disease. I am definitely a vector for some kind of disease right now. OK, um, I'll, tell you, I'll tell you not exactly a story, but I'll, I'll kind of describe a couple of diseases that uh, travel in these different ways to you now but I thought first of all let's just see what you know already so I'm going to show you some pictures and some words here and I want to see how many of them you can link together um, you can put them into four different groups all in all uh, pop you up a bit there we go so you've got uh, the words malaria, cholera, a cold, and salmonella and all the pictures on the screen relate to one of those words so you've got, also got a mosquito a virus, a bacteria, pardon my Latin, called Vibrio cholerae. Uh, you've got an egg, a poo, a, a splash of blood, a drop of water, a bacteria, and what someone called, on Facebook called an old scary dude sitting down. He's actually a hero. Uh, I will tell you who he is in a bit. Oh, go on, I'll see, what do you think? Like, 15 seconds. How many of those can you put together? Water, blood, poo, egg, bacteria... Oh, a little creature that lives in blood, a vibrio, cholera, bacteria, virus, a mosquito, a person doing a sneeze, and the words malaria, cholera, salmonella, and a cold. 15 seconds. I am counting in my head. Uh, 
Have you done it? Well done if you put a cold and a sneeze together. Do you know if a cold it does make you sneeze? Is it caused by a virus or a bacteria? Hmm. Let's talk about it. First of all, let's talk about uh, this thing here. Thank you for the image. Uh, what is this thing? Well, you should have put together, or I have put together, uh, malaria, mosquito, this living thing, a splash of blood, and I also put some mosquito repellent there at the end. Um, some of you will know that mosquitoes cause malaria, okay? Uh, it's actually just one kind of mosquito, and it's just the female, and it's only because she wants to feed her babies. She needs iron just like humans do, but she gets her iron by uh, drinking the blood of animals. Um, but it's not the malaria that causes, it's not the mosquito that causes malaria. The mosquito is a vector, right? What the mosquito is doing is sucking up this microorganism from, say, an animal's blood, and then going over to a human, drinking a bit of the human's blood, but a bit of this organism is getting into the human's blood. And this little organism, it doesn't affect the mosquito in any way, but when it gets into a human, it destroys their blood cells, which is like as bad as it sounds. Um, I'm saying, by the way, to totally geek out, I'm saying microorganism, because if you saw the first lesson, this thing isn't a bacteria uh, or an archaea, it's a eukaryote, so this thing that causes malaria, it's got a cell with a nucleus in it, but it's not an animal or a plant or a fungus, or like even the other one we looked at. It's a whole separate category, which is why I'm just saying microorganism, but I know some of you are thinking, what is it? Tell me. Um, so we think of malaria as kind of being the problem of, of foreign countries, I think, generally, in England. Uh, and, and it is a massive problem. In 2017, there were about 219 million cases of malaria across the world. Uh, they're not all serious, but obviously a small percentage of 219 million is still a lot. So mainly in sub-Saharan Africa and India, um, these cases happened and 435,000 people died. But I didn't know, we did actually used to have malaria in the UK where I live. We, we used to call it marsh fever because we had mosquitoes living in marshy areas. And then we improved our housing and um, there were fewer wetlands like various places where they lived got drained. So it's, it was last in Britain in 1921. Uh, but, you know, could pop here, up here again, I don't know. Um, I also didn't know that you can't catch malaria through... Um, through like touching or being being next to someone or like shaking hands with someone or even someone coughing on you. It's the blood being injected by the mosquito. Uh, so you've got an IGCSE question in a bit about how you stop being bitten by mosquitoes, which will get you marks. Okay, so that's malaria. Let's talk about cholera. So cholera, well, in the 1800s, London kind of quite quickly became the biggest city in the world, okay? We'd had the Industrial Revolution, there's loads of factories popping up, so there's loads of jobs in the cities. So people move from all over the country to live in the city, and basically they just do more poo and wee than the London sewage system can handle. And this new disease pops up called cholera, and it's terrifying because no one knows what it is. Um, yeah, so it's, it's making a lot of people very ill, and well, here's a, I'll show you a Robert Cruikshank cartoon from the time, the 1800s. Of, this is what people's attitudes were. So this is called a cholera doctor. And here you can see someone who is incredibly well-fed, looking very rich and very unsympathetic, who's eating something called cholera pie, which he's obviously enjoying, um, and being supported by the, the Board of Wealth. And you can see this is sort of a comment on how patients were spending a lot of money and being offered a lot of pills and medicines that weren't working. So there's some brandy for the patients, there's some gold pills that they can buy that will do no good, a draft on the pocket, these are all, all hilarious puns. Um, but yeah, there was, there was great suspicion. So um, at the time, people thought that diseases in the 1800s were caused by bad air, they hadn't discovered germs, they thought that, um, yeah, kind of bad, if you could smell a bad smell, then that was the germ. So people were keeping their windows shut. You've seen plague doctors uh, from the very olden times, like the 1600s, walking around with like nice smelling stuff stuffed into their massive noses. Uh, this was to try and avoid this, this bad air. So this, this really lovely guy called Sir Edwin Chadwick believed this theory, as everyone did. He was sent in to solve the problem. Um, and he really tried, like he really believed that cleaning up the streets would mean less people would re be reliant on welfare, so this would be better for poor people. Um, but he may, well, here he is, here's a picture of him. Sir Edwin Chadwick, great guy, 
made it worse. What he did was he sort of solved the sewage problem and made it that all the sewage ran into the river of London. And obviously everyone was using the river of London for like their drinking water and their washing water. It turns out, well, it took someone called John Snow to solve the problem. Here he is from York. If you're ever in York, let me know and I'll, I'll show you uh, where he used to live. So John Snow looked at a map of London and realised that the cholera cases were kind of happening in pockets and that a lot of them were happening around one particular water pump. And he took from this that cholera was travelling through the water supply. And he was right, but no one had heard of this before. So that he persuaded the council to remove the handle from the pump so the pump wouldn't work anymore. And eventually his idea was picked up after kind of a lot of fighting. Uh, so yes, cholera spreads through water. Bring these little images together. Cholera spreads through water and it's called, you might have guessed from the name, by the Vibrio cholerae bacteria, which survives in water. And well done, John Snow, for sorting that out. Here's the other two. Um, a cold is caused by a virus and it's spread when people sneeze through the air. Salmonella is a bacteria which uh, it actually appears in poo a lot and, and it gets into chicken eggs. It's kind of sad why. Um, Farming practices mean that a lot of the time, uh, the way that chickens are farmed, chicken poo from one chicken ends up on another chicken and on their eggs. Uh, so yes, salmonella bacteria are, if you've got to cook chicken extremely well if you eat it, and you've got to cook eggs very well if you eat them, because they are lurking in there. Uh, we will do more about vaccines, maybe next week, very soon. Anyway, um, all chickens in the UK are vaccinated against salmonella for those reasons. Right. I have definitely told you all the things that I need to tell you about diseases. I think it's time for you to do some GCSE questions. Oh, I'll very quickly, I haven't got a magazine around actually, but I'll very quickly tell you how I'm doing this for a living. So I teach an IGCSE lesson on physics every week. I do a Lego story time show where I just tell you about a thing I learned. And I do this homework lesson every week during term time. And I make it all completely free. If you go to my Facebook group, you can, uh, download printouts for the lesson for free and enough people are paying me five pounds a month that it works so if you go to my about section children don't you do it you could just like this video right Sub subscribe have people unliked this video that would be so mean um if you go to my about section on facebook it'll take you through to a link where you can pay me five pounds a month which totally keeps me going and i'll send you theater science magazine and i'll send you some rainbow glasses so when you look at lights you see rainbows and i'll send you an explanation of how you are seeing those rainbows because it's amazing okay Here's your GCSE questions. <sighs> For real lives GCSE questions, see how you get on. They're a bit trickier than they look. Salmonella can cause vomiting and diarrhea. State two ways a person infected with salmonella could prevent spreading the bacteria to other people. You got salmonella, you are pooing and puking a lot. How are you are gonna stop that bacteria getting to other people? Question two, malaria is spread by mosquitoes. What is the name for an organism that carries disease? Oh, what's the name of an organism that carries disease? And B, state one method for controlling the spread of malaria. So some people were getting very technical uh, in the last lesson. One method for controlling the spread of malaria, they basically mean like, how are you not going to get malaria? What can you do to not get malaria? And your summary task, an adult says... I didn't get exposed to any bacteria during lockdown, so my body won't cope with getting ill now. Can you explain why they're wrong in as much detail as you like? There are a few ways that they are wrong. Right, I'm going to write... People were doing better in, this le in these questions than I was actually yesterday. I'm going to write the answers down myself so that we can compare notes. One, two, three, four. <clears throat> I've got four for question one. 
Yeah, so if you're stuck on 2B, it's just how would you not catch malaria? Can you remember how you catch malaria? It tells you that it's spread by mosquitoes. That was quite kind of them, wasn't it? How are you not going to get beaten by a mosquito? Two different ways. Okay, how are you doing? So I flip you back round. Have you got, you reckon you got your two, three, you reckon you got your four marks at GCSE? And why is it not right to say, I didn't get exposed to any bacteria during lockdown, so my body won't cope with getting ill? There's at least two reasons why that is nonsense. One of them I've given you today, and the other one, if you've been concentrating in the previous lessons, you should get it, really. All right, let's do this. Here we go. So question one. Uh, this is this is a good way of showing you how tricksy GCSEs are. Salmonella can cause vomiting and disease. Two ways you could stop it spreading to other people if you had salmonella. Well, I think it's quite likely that you put uh, wash your hands. That wouldn't get you a mark. How mean is that? You have to say wash your hands after going to the toilet or being sick. Because I suppose if you, you wash your hands a lot between sitting down to watch TV and going to bed, it's probably not as important. But when you've been to the toilet or when you've been sick is when you're going to be have bacteria on your hands. So wash them. Or isolating would have got your mark. Or wash your clothes frequently would have got your mark. Or wipe surfaces after cooking, I think, is the ones that they said. Question two. Uh, an organism that carries disease is a vector. Yeah, the pathogen is the disease. Um, and how do you not get bitten by a mosquito? How do you control the spread of malaria? You could have said wear a long top or trousers uh, if you're in a country where there are mosquitoes carrying malaria. Uh, use mosquito repellent, use a mosquito let net for sleeping, or uh, there, there are uh, sort of tablets called anti-malarials that you can take as well, which will stop you getting malaria. Whew. And um, the summary task then, an adult says they didn't get exposed to bacteria during lockdown, so their immune system won't cope with getting ill. I might have thought that. Um, well, first of all, obviously we are exposed to bacteria, aren't we, all the time. There's bacteria in your guts right now that you could not live without. So there's bacteria everywhere. Um, and also, if you're an adult, then your immune system is already developed. So it, it won't make any difference if you are completely germ-free for a few months. Right. That actually is the end of the lesson. Now, you are totally free to go, as you always have been. <laughs> but I'll go over to... Uh, just go over to Facebook and see if anyone said hello. So if you go to what? Is that um, Hannah and Abby? Maybe they're on Instagram. Uh, yes, if you go to my Facebook homepage, then there's a pinned post at the top, which says, I'm on YouTube right now, but there's no comments. So if you want to make a comment, it's back. We just had to change our internet, which obviously for me was a bit of a terrifying experiment. Okay, we're back. You have obviously gone because I, I just went, off screen for ages. <laughs> but I'm going to read your comments anyway. Maybe you'll come back to this video to see. You probably won't. But I'm going to read them anyway. Oh, look! Ah, yes. Jackie is telling me about uh, British eggs being vaccinated against salmonella. Yes. Eggs are hugely safer now than before this is mandatory. Yes. Oh, I just mentioned it. Oh, good. Jackie is saying this. Oh, it's Robin and Hissy the snake. Yay! And I believe Hissy the snake is very interested in infection response. Oh, that's good. Oh, Susanna's here. Oh, Michelle has subscribed. Amazing. Bella is excited about the lesson. Tom is here. And Mark's saying hello. Amazing. Hello, guys. All right, Yusuf. Um, okay, well, that's, that's the end. <laughs> You've probably all gone, so I'm just going to go in the heart to your comments on uh, Facebook. Thank you very much for coming, everyone. I'll see you all soon. Bye.